Um, here's a, a quick overview of our offense, our, our philosophy. We believe in multiple simplicity. Um, and what that means to us is we're going to do a lot of things. Um, we, we may not do one thing great, but we'd rather do, one, we'd rather do many things pretty well. Okay? Um, we think that it, it allows us a lot of variety in what we're doing offensively. Um, we really do have a limited number of plays that we run. I'll show those um, in more detail in just a second. But, you know, as I think, uh, you know, like I would, I would compare, like what on last I'm going to talk about this afternoon, we'll use our formation shifts, personnel groupings, our motions just to, to kind of disguise what it is that we're doing. Um, also, I think one of the big things for us has been including many players in specific roles. We've got, a, you know, we certainly don't have, you know, Division One athletes coming out of our ears. We've got guys that go off and play a lot of Division Three football, which is fine. I think you can win a lot of games with that. And, and those kids are pretty gritty kids that go off and play that type of football. <clears throat> but what I think is important is finding roles for those kids and not um, eliminating them from your football program based on who you think they are and who they think they are. I think that they all have an idea of who they are as they come up throughout the program. But it's up to us to find roles for those guys so that we can keep them engaged in football and keep them out for football. Okay? So I think that you know, offensively, we've had guys that go in on one personnel grouping. When we call the cheetah personnel, this, that, that one kid is coming out of the field, and it's, that's his role, and he embraces that role, and he loves that role, and that's our way to get him involved in what we're doing. Um, so I think that the, the, uh, the offensive simplicity has allowed him to compete at our level, but it's also the, the variety has allowed us to keep him off when we don't need him on. Quick uh, overview of our offense. <clears throat> run game and run zone. I think we'd pri prioritize that first. And each each off season, including this one, we have a discussion. You know, what are we running really well? What are we not running so well? Um, but it's all within the parameters of this. You know, we're not saying, hey, what's going to be our offense next year? We say this is our offense next year. But who's returning, and in what ways can we prioritize our offense so that we can get the most out of our kids? We run a zone scheme, a down scheme, and then I would say ISO. Um, and the reason I put that up there is because you could list, I think, any play that you run, and we could find a way to fit it into either the zone scheme or the down scheme. Okay? And I'll talk about tags in a minute, but that, that's how I think we would get that multiple simplicity in our offense. The pass game is pretty simple. We, we don't do anything crazy in our pass game. Um, offensively, we installed the offense in 2013. <clears throat> kind of the origins of the offense was when I got over to Park, um, from Tartan, we, um, when I was at Tartan, we ran the uh, Tony Franklin system, which was all passing. You know, you'd yell out the plays and uh, purple seven or whatever it was. You know, so we did that for a year, and there was like two run plays in that whole offense. At least that's the only ones we ran. Okay, and then when we got down to Park, um, we were kind of, um, I don't know, inspired maybe, or we kind of took some from the uh, end zone system, the, the Noel Mazzoni system. So we took some ideas from that. And then when we got over to New Richmond, uh, our offensive coordinator, Jason Eckert, had some ideas. He was a jet sweep guy, and so we incorporated some of that stuff. So 2013, it was kind of like a spread offense. It was a spread offense, but it had some power eye concepts. It had uh, some of that Tony Franklin stuff. It had some of the end zone stuff. And again, it was like this big. And we sat down in the offseason, and there were like a 1,000 plays. And we said, we've got to find a way to refine this. So 2013 was kind of our, our, uh, our trial run there. <clears throat> and then 14 through 17 has been really refined. And we've taken everything that we've ran uh, in, you know, in 13 and just said, here's what we're going to run. And so we're running zone, we're running down, and that's it. All right? And then some different passes off of that. Um, you know, I, I talked about attitude, and I talked about uh, um, a little bit of adversity. This year was a, a tremendously adverse year for us. It was, it was the, the strangest year of high school football I've ever been a part of in my life. Um, we canceled our week two game, which is, yeah, we, we canceled the football game. We had a norovirus outbreak on our team. We had like 20 guys puking, and it was a really bad deal. And um, so we canceled the game. Both of our kickers, we had two soccer kids. They're soccer kids. They don't even play football. They, they, both of them broke their leg. Both kickers broke, break their leg. So we're, we're in the last, uh, the first round of the playoff game, we're on the five-yard line, down by three, and we don't have a kicker. Okay? So, again, just adverse situations, but I think, you know, the, the neat thing about this is 
that, you know, even in those adverse years, we're still averaging 30 points a game um, and six wins. And, and so, that, you know, as I showed on that previous slide, I think it's it certainly changed a lot. And I think that, uh, you know, the, the simple offense has contributed to that in a lot of ways. <coughs> so, we run zone, run down, and then we'll run uh, a limited number of pass plays. Here's what tags are. So, and everybody uses them. We just use them in different capacities. Tags are us. To us, they create the offensive flexibility um, for mostly our skilled kids. And the, the responsibilities for the guys up front will not change a lot. Okay? Um, it gives the illusion of an entirely different play, while really there's just minimal changes within the offense. And then, you know, we think that it gives us the chalk glass. So when we watch film or we're, scheme, we're scheming for a, a team, we think that with a tag, we can simply change a play to allow it to, to be a little different um, to give us the chalk glass. <coughs> Here's an example. This would be an example for an, for an inside zone play. Okay? Um, so the two and three would be our inside zone. So if we're running two, that would be zone to the right, inside zone to the right, and three would be inside zone to the left. Uh, and then we could tag two and three with any one, of, any, any one of these words based on what we're seeing on defense. So, for example, if we call two book, two book's just going to be your double option play. Okay, if we call two back, um, our back and tackle switch responsibilities. If we call two fan, we're going to leave the nose. We're just, you know, this, and this originated from back in the day when we couldn't block anybody. And they said, well, if you can't, if you can't block and read them, I'm like, how do you block every single guy, every single, or how do you read every guy? We can't block any of them. You know, so we had to, like, identify a guy on this play that we were going to read and, and let give a guy a play off. And then the next play, figure out we're going to read this guy so that we can give that kid a play off. Um, so we certainly don't have every single one of these in every year, um, nor do we have them in every week. These are sort of based on what we're seeing and how we're going to scheme against that team. So we think that with our tags, we can, you could line up in anything, and we could tag it and, and create a mismatch. This is important because in our, in our bootleg, we do the same thing. So in our pass game, we'll do the exact same thing. Um, why do we run boots? We think it puts second-level defenders in conflict. I'll show, I'll show some clips um, in which that occurs. Uh, it's a very high percentage throw. In 2013, it was a 51% pass completion for us. The last four years, it's been over 70%. This last, in 2016, it was 81% and zero picks. Um, I think we had nine touchdowns off of it. You don't need a strong thrower to complete it. We've never, I think in 2015, we had a pretty strong thrower. Um, the last two years, we really haven't had a strong thrower. Pretty athletic kid, but a, a kid that was, you know, not able to complete the really deep passes. So within the boot, he was able to take a deep shot, which we needed at times, but he was also able just to dump it off and make a, a three-yard throw that will, uh, you know, get an athlete in space and allow that guy to pick up a lot of yards. The play enables the quarterback to get to the, to the edge. We'll talk about our progression in a second, but... As the kid is headed out, as he's rolling out, he's going through his progression. And when he reaches a certain point, he's just going to take off. So if, if that's what happens every single play, we, we would feel okay. Uh, that, that that would be a pretty good play. Um, it's, it's good for, versus the blitz. I'll show some protections that we use. Um, it's got a big play potential every single time. It's a half field progression. <clears throat> and if we want to go to the backside, we will tag it. And I'll explain that in a second as well. Um, and then like a run game, we can just change things. Uh, really anything with a tag. 